Welcome to iLecture Online. Now let's take a closer look at what we mean by a periodic function. You can see, of course, we have a sinusoidal function here, and it appears to be repeating at every 2 pi. In other words, when omega t equals 2 pi, when omega t equals 4 pi, and so forth, it looks like the function has the exact same value. It repeats every 2 pi. And now we're going to show you that when we increase the time by a period, then we should get the same function back again. So going back again, we have that the voltage as a function of time is equal to the maximum voltage of the oscillation times the sine or the cosine of omega t, omega being the angular frequency. And since omega p can be expressed as 2 pi times the frequency, the frequency can also then be expressed in terms of the angular frequency divided by 2 pi. And since the period of the function is equal to the inverse of the frequency, the period can then also be written as 2 pi divided by omega, omega being the angular frequency. It's called the period of the function. So if we do have a periodic function, that means that every period we have the exact same voltage pattern and that it repeats itself over every period. Now that means that the voltage as a function of t plus the period should equal to the voltage of the time. So what we're going to do now is we're going to replace t plus t in our function right here. So instead of writing t, we're going to write t plus t. And then we're going to show you that that looks exactly the same as the original function. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply this out. Or first, maybe before we do that, let's take the period and write it as 2 pi over omega. So this can be written as v max. And so we're just going to use the single letter m to notate maximum voltage is equal to the sine of omega times t plus. Instead of the period, we will we'll write the equivalent of 2 pi over omega. And that should look like a, an omega there. That's better. So now we're going to multiply the omega inside the parentheses. So this becomes v max times the sine of omega t plus, and then if I multiply this times this, then the omegas cancel out, and that would be 2 pi. So this now becomes the phase angle. Remember that if there's a phase angle, we can say that the voltage as a function of time can be written as the maximum voltage times the sine of omega t plus a phase angle. Now phase angle in this case is equal to 2 pi, which would be the entire period of the function. And so you can see that if we have omega t plus 2 pi, we get exactly the same thing as we had when we have omega without the 2 pi. So this becomes v max times the sine of omega t, which again shows you that this is indeed a periodic function. We add a period to it, and we get the exact same function we started with. Because after all, we add one period, we add a phase angle of exactly 2 pi, you get back to the same point. And that's what we mean by a sinusoidal function or a sinusoidal voltage function or current function. It repeats itself every period. That's why we call them periodic functions.